Hello and welcome to Exclusive with Taghrib Hussain here on Nile TV International. Well, uh, tonight we are having uh, with us a very inspiring woman and uh, she's a, a very good example of women empowerment in Sri Lanka and a very focused and determined and result-oriented corporate leader as well with over 30 years of experience. Uh, she's working in the field of tourism and uh, we're really honored to have with us on exclusive with Dagrit Hussain, Mrs. Kimali Fernando, the chairperson of Sri Lanka uh, Tourism. Thank you so much, uh, Your Excellency, for being with us on Nile TV. And as I said in the introduction, you are a true example of uh, an inspiring woman and also uh, of women empowerment in Sri Lanka. Uh, let us know more about the highlights until uh, you have uh, uh, reached uh, uh, the post of the chairperson of uh, Sri Lanka Tourism. Definitely uh, a march that is uh, with pride you can narrate today and important steps in your life. Uh, well, um, I have been, uh, I studied in Sri Lanka and then after that I was in UK for my education. Uh, part of my education uh, came back uh, to Sri Lanka. During my school days, I was uh, a sportswoman. Uh, I uh, represented Sri Lanka uh, in swimming and uh, captained the Sri Lanka team uh, in the Asian Games as well. So a lot of sports uh, activities when I was young. I studied law, uh, I'm based at the uh, UK, Lincoln Zane, and attorney at law in Sri Lanka. I joined banking quite early on. Um, and uh, worked in foreign banks like Deutsche Bank, Standard Chartered. I worked in Germany as well in Deutsche Bank uh, in aircraft financing. Um, so I moved around a bit and uh, been in, uh, on several boards, uh, public quoted uh, companies, uh, blue chip companies in Sri Lanka. And um, with the change of government uh, uh, recently, well, yes. end of last year. I was appointed as the, the chairperson uh, of the four institutions in tourism. Uh, um, several pa pa people from the private sector uh, agreed to support the government uh, in, the, in the initiatives. Uh, tourism being a critical uh, uh, sector for Sri Lanka, uh, I'm pleased uh, to be involved uh, and to lead the four institutions together with my team. We are really uh, uh, very impressed by uh, your march that you are narrating today, Excellency, uh, with pride. Uh, Mrs. Fernando, uh, we're talking today and experiencing the pearl of the Indian Ocean, uh, Sri Lanka as a beautiful uh, destination, exploring Sri Lanka today. And we heard of uh, the uh, going on in the couch safari and uh, the beautiful sightseeing of Sri Lanka. What would you tell us today? about this uh, beautiful experience and uh, tell me more also about the idea because during COVID uh, of course we all go on virtual tours however it is always great to see people around to see uh, people overseas also interested in exploring more and knowing more about Sri Lanka tell me more about the idea behind the virtual tour absolutely the, the idea came about because you know, in Sri Lanka, we have 26 national parks and uh, we have lots of guests visiting our parks. Some are more popular than others. Several requests came from overseas uh, saying, you know, asking us when, it, when is Sri Lanka opening? Could we come? Why not from this country? So many demands came asking us when the airport is going to be open. And then we realized that, you know, we, we can share, share Sri Lanka with you. Uh, till we open, which we hope to open soon, uh, because Sri Lanka has 26 national parks. One third, one third of Sri Lanka is actually a forest area. So it's a very green, uh, if you like, island. And uh, we have the highest uh, density of waterfalls uh, in the world. Uh, we have two waterfalls. We have 103 uh, rivers. So it's a very um, nature, there's a lot of nature, flora, fauna, and uh, we used the opportunity during the time the airports were closed globally uh, to share what we have. And uh, currently the Couch Safari, uh, we, we are showing uh, live telecasting of two, uh, no, sorry, four uh, parts. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, three yeah. of them of uh, elephants. Uh, the other one, uh, Yala, is you would see elephants as well, but leopard uh, as well as bear and and many other animals. Let us share uh, with our viewers, Excellency, excerpts of this beautiful tour and uh, we'll be back to continue our discussion and to know more from you about the beautiful uh, attractions and how to market Sri Lanka as uh, a tourist destination. Stay with us, please. Still talking about the different tourist attractions in Sri Lanka and uh, concentrating more on the vision to uh, promote Sri Lanka uh, to the world through Nile TV International today and through our, uh, our audiences all over the world, what would you tell them? Sri Lanka is an island, a compact island that has everything what a post-COVID tourist wants whether it is the nature, whether it's the beaches, whether it's the plantations, whether it's the city, whether it's the food, the culture, uh, wellness uh, and everything. So we see going forward post-COVID a growth in nature-based tourism uh, where people would look for camping, for trekking, for wild swimming. People would look for uh, the wellness side of it and we would like to share our over 2,500 old history of ancient Ayurveda and Helaveda Kama, which is to increase immunity, actually, uh, which most of us are, in fact, using right through, through COVID. So I think going forward, most countries, not only Sri Lanka, but most countries will look to sustainable strategies, uh, which we too have implemented and continue to implement, looking at several of our sites uh, to convert them to uh, sustainable destinations and conservancies. So I think going forward, tourism will be very purpose-driven uh, tourists, I think, and that people will be staying possibly longer, uh, closer to nature, uh, closer to space, more space and, you know, nature-based tourism. Yes. So Sri Lanka yes. with five international airports, and uh, nine domestic airports, in fact, one airport, international airport, was opened while during COVID. Um, and we have nine uh, domestic airports. Uh, so it's easy to travel around Sri Lanka. You could see a leopard, an elephant, uh, you know, go and see the tea plantations and come back to Colombo the same day and have a crab dinner. So it's a very compact island and I think that um, post-COVID Sri Lanka is well suited uh, for the global tourists. Yes, definitely. And while we are airing excerpts of the virtual tour, uh, definitely uh, the wildlife uh, looks exceptional. So what are we expected to see uh, uh, while visiting? Tell us more. It's very inspiring. Uh, with regards to the cow safari, of course, uh, the, the animals would be basically the elephants, all types of animals, the, uh, the leopard, the, the bear, uh, the birds, actually, some of the, some of the uh, parks that we have are really like uh, Kumana. Um, it's very famous for birds, actually. Uh, even Vilpattu, we can see loads of different, different types of birds. So, and wild horse and so on. So, Sri Lanka, you could see animals, 
You have the beautiful, obviously, the beaches, which we are famous for, the plantations, um, which is uh, uh, amazing, it's spectacular. Within a few hours of a drive, or if it's you're on a seaplane, it's 20 minutes, uh, you could see uh, plantation. Um, the culture, Egypt is also has a long, long history. Uh, we, 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 we both our countries have long history, so we have a, a you know, our, uh, what we call the in Andhradapur area, Sigiri, uh, uh, Polon, Narwa, those are the areas that you would go and see the ancient culture. Uh, in fact, uh, the one of the first uh, hospitals, I believe, uh, inpatient hospitals were built uh, in Sri Lanka. So this is another area that I think we could offer uh, the world, uh, the tourists, the global tourists, uh, the wellness. I think we can share so much on wellness uh, going forward. And we're already uh, uh, making some um, videos and promotions and digital marketing uh, going forward on, on the wellness aspect as well. Yes, uh, talking, yes, yes, Excellency, talking Egypt, and as you've mentioned, with its rich history and culture and civilization. Uh, how can we uh, proceed and further boost our uh, touristic relations between both countries, Egypt and Sri Lanka? What do we have in store? Absolutely. Um, Egypt Air recently uh, started cargo flights. Uh, I think it, over, we didn't have any flights from Egypt Air maybe for a few decades. And I see that as an initial step towards establishing regular flights, I hope. Uh, between uh, uh, Egypt and Sri Lanka. Uh, irrespective, uh, there are several flights, the international flights that uh, come from uh, Sri Lanka and obviously through uh, transit mode that you could come over. We, we absolutely look forward to working with uh, Egypt, Egypt government, Egypt tourist board to welcome uh, passengers from uh, guests from your country. Uh, we have already, uh, the visa process has been streamlined. The one month visa we will be extending very soon to six months, anybody who wishes to stay. So we are even looking at even longer extensions of visas. Uh, we are absolutely looking forward uh, to welcoming uh, your citizens. Uh, Sri Lanka uh, is a beautiful island. And uh, Egypt, I too have visited Egypt uh, many years ago. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. It was one of my best holidays. So I too am looking forward to visit your country soon and to welcome uh, each and every one of you uh, to our beautiful uh, island soon. Mrs. Fernando, uh, you're saying that Egypt is considered to be one of the most beautiful holidays uh, uh, that you have spent and uh, definitely uh, you uh, did go back home with memories and with lots of Egyptian friends as well. Uh, tell us more about uh, memories with Egypt and about the different places and the sightseeing places that you visited here. Yes, it was a very short visit and it was many, many years ago. And I came with my children, uh, who are now of course not uh, much bigger now in university, but um, so we went uh, obviously the pyramids and we enjoyed the food, uh, the people, uh, amazing. I mean, I learned something with regards to sort of the how you handle uh, tourism. At that time, I had no interest uh, in, I was not involved in tourism, actually, I was a banker then at that time. Uh, it was a very memorable trip. Uh, I remember the, 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 the kids and I were just absolutely blown with uh, the, the, the history, the culture, the, everything that, uh, that Egypt has to offer. And uh, I'm sure many, many uh, Sri Lankans uh, will visit Egypt, uh, mm -hmm. as, as most, I think, I believe lots of visitors are from Europe to Egypt, I believe. Um, and uh, I'm sure that uh, Sri Lanka, we could uh, you know, promote, jointly promote. Uh, Egypt and, uh, and Sri Lanka to for our citizens to visit each other. Yes. Uh, what do you think, Excellency, of uh, a nice program uh, entitled that we propose here on Nile TV International uh, to the uh, Sri Lankan uh, Tourism Board uh, talking about exploring both countries, letting the peoples of both nations know more about what each country has to offer to the tourists namely explore Egypt, explore Sri Lanka. 
uh, and we can work in hand in hand about such a program that would, uh, from one time to the other, promote the two countries' cultures and sightseeing and tourism and more. Absolutely, a phenomenal idea. Uh, I would love to follow up on that uh, and meet the ambassador here. Uh, and uh, absolutely, that's a fabulous idea and I think we could absolutely take it forward. Yes, uh, definitely. Well, uh, Your Excellency talking about uh, your vision vis-a-vis -vis the future of tourism in both countries, Egypt and Sri Lanka. And uh, we're working definitely here in Egypt also, uh, as you know, under the leadership of His Excellency, the President, in order to uh, complete one of the projects that we narrate its story with pride, which is the gem, the, the Grand Egyptian Museum that is expected to be inaugurated in 2021. And more than one uh, tourist attraction, actually, uh, the upcoming season, uh, like uh, when the year uh, wraps up, it's usually uh, the beautiful Sharm el Sheikh receiving visitors and tourists also from all over the world and her gada. And if we enter uh, winter time, then it's Luxor and, and it's Aswan with the, with the sunshine and with the nice weather and with the, the open air museum that is unparalleled all over the world. What do we have in store concerning uh, the tourism uh, programs, uh, hopefully, that COVID uh, would end? Absolutely. I mean, Sri Lanka has uh, the Sigiriya, which is uh, very famous in Sri Lanka, which is rock um, that... Um, the beaches, uh, the, we have candy, the city that we should, I would recommend that you visit. Um, Nuralia, which is actually the plantations, uh, the tea plantations uh, are. Uh, we have uh, in Nigambo, uh, which is also uh, uh, lots of tourist uh, sites and hotels and what have you there. We have Trincomalee, which has also a harbor and it's a very beautiful uh, area. We have, of course, Gaul, which is very famous uh, down south uh, for, for visitors. A lot of visitors uh, would travel uh, down south as well uh, and spend maybe long stay visitors would like, if they like to stay on the beach. The advantage of Sri Lanka is that uh, we, we, every time, because it's an island and you can be on the beach if you need uh, different sides of Sri Lanka, if you like. Uh, so, uh, so during the down south, we could be there from uh, I would say about November to March, uh, down south is a good area. You of course see the whales and the dolphins, uh, the whale watching and dolphin. The Couch Safari actually which we are doing right now, uh, over four um, parks. Uh, we would next uh, be looking at uh, the whales and the dolphins and a, a safari in the sea if you like. Yes. Uh, so that we yeah. will share with you. And in fact, our temples, uh, we, we would like to share. Um, then also the food, obviously, that is very important for even if I notice even in Egypt, it's the same. Uh, food is very important. Uh, so this is something also uh, we would like to share. Uh, definitely. And let's share with our audience uh, uh, now together excerpts of uh, that beautiful tour. And we'll be back to continue our discussion. about uh, uh, Sri Lanka's uh, tourism uh, board 
and uh, a sense of co cooperation and collaboration with tourist boards all over the world. What's in store? Actually, the Sri Lanka Tourism is, has four institutions. Um, that is the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, uh, the Promotion Bureau, uh, the Convention side, that is the MICE, uh, and also we have uh, the Hotel School. Um, the MICE business, I think, is also another area that uh, all countries, including our two countries, uh, could focus on. People say that because of COVID, we cannot do big conventions and so on. That's true. However, Sri Lanka has never been a huge, like 10,000 um, sort of a pack uh, kind of a conventions. I think that going forward, the conventions, the mice business uh, would be looked at in com combination with leisure. So you would have a conference and it would be part actually of a holiday as well. So that is something as well that we would look to. Uh, the wedding tourism in Sri Lanka, particularly with our neighbor in India, uh, we find, and even in Europe, uh, several weddings are held in Sri Lanka. To date, I get so many emails and requests uh, asking us whether they can continue with their plan for January or whatever time, the weddings. So weddings is also another um, uh, area that is on the growth side. Sri Lanka's ourselves, we, we enjoy very big weddings, uh, 500 people, six, seven hundred, sometimes even thousands. So we enjoy big weddings and uh, weddings is something, themed weddings in Sri Lanka uh, has been quite popular in the past few years. Uh, with regards to the conventions, obviously there are conferences that I'm sure from Egypt uh, to Sri Lanka or from Sri Lanka to Egypt, these are things that some things that we, 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 we can actually uh, look at going forward. The, the another area is with regard. I'm not sure how it happened. Uh, what's the structure in Egypt? Uh, but in Sri Lanka, we we also manage the hotel school. So we are the people who the institution that trains um, uh, staff employees for uh, the industry, whether it is the chef or a, for the housekeeping or for the concierge or all the areas, even the tour guides, uh, tour drivers, uh, etc. And we are now during this downtime. Uh, upgrading the training uh, of tour guides and drivers and so on, working with actually some international partners as well uh, to uplift uh, the training uh, done for tour guides and uh, improving the, the syllabus if you like and teaching additional courses like the digital marketing, uh, English training, etc. during this time uh, so that we would be ready uh, when the time is uh, right to to open the airport. Still, despite um, the COVID situation, we do find that in Sri Lanka that foreign investment still is coming in for tourism and there are projects which are still continuing and new requests coming in. So during this period, we actually even rationalized the whole investment process of tourism because there was, before there were like a lot of agencies, 20, 20, 30 agencies you would need to get approval from. So we have rationalized that process. We have a master uh, document and an agreement so that, you know, any investor, uh, the, the process is made easier. We have also, uh, during this time, uh, already created an app, a tourist app, a travel app, um, which will be incorporated into the immigration um, uh, application, which is anyway online already. Uh, so that during, uh, with that app, we would also get information on where the guests would be staying uh, due to, because of COVID situation. Uh, we would uh, uh, need various uh, requirements for PCR testing and so on. And that travel app, uh, which is already made, is in now in the process of being uh, upgraded uh, to the next version. So in that version, actually, we will have over 5,000 sites that the tourists could visit, uh, whether it is camping, if you are interested in hiking, or uh, you know any area of tourism with its history, or whether you are like waterfalls, you want to go and see rivers, or you want to see harbors, or if you like fishing, or trekking, or biking, or whatever. So we would have all those over 5,000 sites uh, in, uh, in that travel app. Uh, we would have... Um, you know, little videos, content uh, on the on the, on the sites. 
as well as obviously the accommodation sector, the, all the hotels and restaurants and so on. We would have also an emergency button in case there's some issue or whatever connected to the police. If you want to share that you have lost your purse or you have something, so you can share that. There's a content management side of it where you can make any com like complaint management side where you can make some kind of complaint if there's some issue uh, about a hotel or uh, some kind of bad experience if you have had. Um, you can upload pictures actually uh, to our uh, travel app uh, and share your your journey uh, in Sri Lanka with us. Uh, then um, you can actually rate uh, travel uh, your tour of, uh, to a guide uh, in that process so that you would sort of give us feedback on how then we can improve the training, etc. Uh, so. The, the tourism travel app, actually we have done a study of travel apps uh, uh, in the rest of the world, uh, key uh, countries and uh, we are in the process actually of uh, upgrading uh, that and I believe that that would make a significant difference including like to be able to buy uh, tickets, um, online tickets to government line agencies meaning the sites that are owned by the government. Uh, whether it is Igiria or whether it is Yala or whether it is a park, the, the train tickets and so on. So with the travel app, it would be that a tourist would basically, if you like, be able to do everything that you need to be able to do in terms of the admin side of things. Uh, it would be uh, uh, much easier. So I think what we are doing as a, uh, from a tourism perspective is that using this time to review everything, um, using this time to uh, uh, use technology. To re-energize as well, yes. Exactly. To re-energize and to introduce more. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. That's great and inspiring news and we really enjoyed uh, the virtual tour tonight and we saw uh, lovely uh, touristic attractions in Sri Lanka. We're really proud of your efforts. Mrs. Kimali Fernando, the chairperson of Sri Lanka Tourism, thank you so much for joining Nile TV International on Exclusive with Tagreet Hussain. And uh, uh, best of luck and success in your mission. I thank you so much. And uh, that was this exclusive with uh, Mrs. Kimali Fernando, the chairperson of Sri Lanka uh, Tourism, where we have reviewed the plans during COVID-19 and also we have enjoyed a beautiful virtual tour uh, promoting the different tourist attractions in Sri Lanka and also talked further on cooperation between Egypt and Sri Lanka and further boosting our touristic relations. Many thanks for watching.